Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks postgame show. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. The Hawks lose 5-2 in St. Louis. They trailed 4-0. Uh, after seven minutes. After seven minutes. Look, hey, you flush the first seven minutes of this game away. Blackhawks win 2-1. Yeah. That's fair. Hey, they were down 4-0 on four shots. Yes. Yeah. Zero saves. Peter Mrazek in this one. Uh, Arvid Soderblom comes in relief and uh, stops to uh, stops a twenty one of twenty three St. Louis shots, but it was all too late. Uh, really poor start for the Blackhawks in this one. Before we get started, first of all, if you are with us, which on our watch along, we thank you for that. Thanks for being here on the post game show. Yes. Either way, make sure you smash that like button for us. And you Subscribe have to look on YouTube. for the like button now. Yeah, you might have that weird new. YouTube setup. I know not everybody has it just yet. They're rolling it out. But if you have our video and then several videos below it, you're going to have to X out of the chat to find the thumbs up and the subscribe button to hit those. Then you got to hit reshow chat. It's a big pain in the ass. Seems YouTube seamless. is messing with stuff arbitrarily just to screw us. Yeah. Why hide <laughs> the things that help everybody? I feel like YouTube hates YouTubers. Yeah. You think so? Anyway, so if you're seeing it and YouTube looks different, the like button is right underneath the chat. You just got to X out of the chat for a second there. So please do that for us. We would appreciate that. Let's get to the four stars of the game uh, so we can get on with the show here. The three stars, they're all blue, so who cares? Uh, our nominees for this one are Philip Kershev, who had a goal his 17th of the season, 17-21 of ice time. He had one shot on goal and four shot attempts. Arvid Soderblom stopped 21 of 23 shots in relief of Peter Mrazek. And Landon Slaggart scored his first NHL goal, 11.59 of ice time, three shots, and four shot attempts. So uh, right. I think we know the way this one's going to go. Well. And why don't we start there, okay. fellas? We were sort of talking off the air before this one started about Landon Slaggart heading into next year, and, and I sort of contended I see no reason for Landon Slaggart to spend any time in Rockford. He has shown me in his time here in Chicago that he is an NHL player and should be on the NHL roster until he loses that job. I mean, he's he's playing at a <clears throat> he's playing at the NHL pace, uh, which is good to see. Um, I think when 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 we had the opportunity to talk to him uh, a couple days ago, a week ago, whatever that was, um, you know, he told us that the the speed of the game was actually not as fast as he th expected it to be, which has made his transition from college to the NHL. Um, a little bit easier and, and yeah getting getting rewarded tonight for uh, you know his his hard work his efforts I mean we we talked about it during the watch along like you know the 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 start of the game the efforts to begin the game were not awesome and if you're on this team at this stage of the season and you're looking for the exit door it's a real easy way to get on Luke Richardson's bad side and yeah. Kyle Davidson's bad side as well um, so Slaggart coming in, you know, he's, he's looking to prove himself, uh, and he's, he's played hard since he's been here. Um, he is, like you said, like he's looked like a guy who deserves to be in the NHL. Uh, I had a really good game today. He had a opportunity, a breakaway opportunity earlier in the, I think it was earlier in the third period that, uh, that didn't fall and he got a second opportunity and, and buried it and happy to see that for him. And yeah, I mean, he's, he's the kind of guy that's like that, you know, Energy, high motor, four checker, hard to play against. Even though he's not the biggest guy out there, like that's that is one of those players that Kyle Davidson inherited from the previous regime. That I think he's very happy with keeping around because it's the kind of player he wants to have uh, in the org. Yeah, I think the only way Landon Slaggart does not make the team out of training camp next year is if. 
he's not one of the best 13 forwards, and that's not a bad thing. Right. If there are 13 yeah. forwards that's here next true. fall yeah. that are better than him, that's something to be excited about. Yeah. Uh, depending on what young youngsters make the jump, depending on what they do free agent-wise, Taylor Hall's back. You know, there's not going to be as many uh, – Guaranteed spots. Right. Next year's training camp is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be roster battles. Position battles, uh, yeah. You know, Actual. something we haven't had in a while. There's a little bit of that last year. You know, who's going to be the last forward? Is it going to be Reese Johnson or Mackenzie Entwistle? Uh, yeah. But, I mean, Slaggart should be here to start the season. But if it's not because this team improved the roster that much, I – can't be upset about that no that would be and and, and thing. you know a half a season or a full season in rockford isn't the worst thing in the world uh look what yeah. that did for for an alex vlasic who came up was impressive in a sh- after his college season we all thought he was going to be here the next year and wasn't and now you're 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 reaping the rewards as he's literally based on the numbers and based on even the the chat the uh graph guys agree one of the best shutdown defensemen in the league, period. Yes, in all of hockey. Not for a young guy, not for no. guys under 23. Flat out, one of the best defensive defensemen in right. the NHL. So yeah. if Slaggard has to, plays next year in Rockford, I don't think it's the end of the world. But as of now, it's not. he's an NHLer. But I wouldn't be mad if he was the 14th best forward heading in the opening night yeah. next year. Well, I mean, look, we were talking about this during the watch along, too. Like, as you do look ahead to next year and – do we really need to break down this 5-2 loss to the Blues? I don't think so. No, it as you, sucks. As you look ahead to next year, I look at the way the Coyotes sort of started this year. like Maybe a little better than they impressed. They hung around until the All-Star break a little bit and then pff, fell off because yeah. they, they had some injuries. You had guys you know, adjusting to the first like 82-game season of their career and their production sort of dropped. Also, they don't have... They got Clayton Keller, of course, is great. Yeah. But, you know, they don't have any of those, like, a lot of super skilled players. They also sold, too, at the yeah. trade deadline. Right, exactly. So, um, you could see the Hawks. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs next year, but maybe a little more competitive than people expect, especially if they can bring in a difference-making free agent or two. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that is a route that they can go. I think they're – they're not going to go into the off season and be breaking the bank for anybody. Kyle Davidson's made that very clear. Um, but I think there's, there's guys that they could go out and look for in, in free agency to uh, in the short term, bolster the, the roster and guys that could have an opportunity to take a two or three year contract. And if they play up to it or above it, earn an extension. I mean, we've seen, Kyle Davidson give guys extensions because they've earned it and because they've put themselves in good positions in the organization to show that they can help move the team forward. Those standards might be different in two years, but if a guy like, let's say Max Domi, who's someone we mentioned on the watch along is like, could be a fit to bring, to bring back and and is a free agent this off season, you bring him in on a two, two or three year deal He's not a guy in his mid to late thirties that's on the back end of his his career. Like he's still got uh, a good amount of career ahead of him. Who's to say that if the Blackhawks brought him in, he played well in a top six role, he earned a second contract and can stick around for when things are much better. Like I, I think there's there's an opportunity there um, for for free agents to uh, to do that and for the Blackhawks to find guys like that. I'm really looking forward to the off season, part of the off season, yeah. The free agency, the draft. Mm-hmm. Like, look, it's been fun watching Connor Bedard grow and Alex Vlasic grow, but I think we're all kind of at this point. I, I think I speak for a lot of Hawks fans here too, where you have a game like this, you have a game like the last game, and you're just like, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm ready. Like, let's. Let's put a fork in this thing and uh, let's move on to the off season yeah. and you know the draft lottery and then the draft and free agency and I'm very much looking forward to that and can we just fast forward to training camp next year? That'd be good. <laughs> I don't want to fast forward through all the summer. 
Yeah, I, I suppose. like having some time off. That's true. I don't know. It's just uh, it was it was definitely a frustrating game. And uh, a couple quotes rolling in post game. Uh, this is from Ben Pope. Says that Jason Dickinson is fuming after that game. Ben says he asked what was discussed at the first intermission. Quote: What needs to be said? I don't think anything needs to be said. Embarrassing first period. We had one shot, maybe three shot attempts. We're down four nothing. What six, needs to be said? Six shot attempts to be exact, Jason. I mean, there you go. I mean, that's yeah. I, that's it. It's a horrible period. You sure just was. you, you had, you're down you, four nothing before the first commercial break. Yeah, they they didn't have a shot before the first. They took the they got the first shot on goal, and then they said, "Okay, commercial," and, and that it was, was it for the first. By and the way. that was it. Yeah, it was just yeah. It's just uh, this this first period. I feel like it's one of those times where I, I would assume Richardson uh, said some stuff on the bench and then didn't need to go into the locker room to say anything else. Um, it's got to be one of those first periods where you're just like, you look around the room and you say, does anybody want to play tonight? Let's, we got 40 minutes to try and turn it around. And they played a better 40 minutes than the first 20 minutes, uh, but it was already too late. So you kind of just go out there and say, let's try and restart it. Uh, in the second period and go from there. Yeah, it's – we talked about this during the first period, and I know, you know, you're going to – anytime they they get off to a slow start, you're going to get the conversation about, you know, is this Luke Richardson's fault? Is this – well, sure, maybe a little bit, but at this point of the year on a bad team, you know, how is it Luke Richardson's fault – Jared Tenorti just stands there and let Jordan Cairo skate right by him for breakaway. That's not Luke Richardson's fault. You could say it's Luke Richardson's fault for playing Jared Tenorti. Yeah. But right now there's only six healthy defensemen. Right. Connor Murphy is hopefully coming back Friday, and I'm hoping it's Jared Tenorti that is sitting and watching. Um, Nikita Zaitsev had a bad game too. But, again, how much is that? Is is it Zaitsev being bad, or is it Zaitsev trying to play two positions because his defensive partner is just doesn't have his head in the game today? Yeah. Um for the most part, Zaitsev has been fine, fine. this year. Fine. Um, but it seems that there are some players that are passengers on this team. The bright side is the players that matter to this rebuild are not in that category. Correct. You, you, you haven't been able to uh, question Counter Bedard's effort this year. No. Right. Uh, you haven't been able to question Kevin Korczynski's effort this year. There are there are holes to both of their games, no doubt. They're young players. But you can't say, like, hey, they're not trying hard. You can't say that about Vlasic. You can't say that about Landon Slaggart. You can't really say that about Philip Kurashev. So the guys that are going to be here long term, hopefully, the guys that matter – they're not the passengers. You know who the guys are the passengers? The guys wearing different uniforms next year. Yeah. And you'll find out what the Hawks think of these guys yes. soon. Uh, um, do you want to go through the list and say who cares and who doesn't? <laughs> do it again. Uh, can we do that after we find out who's not coming back next year? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, we have a mystery question. There's a quote, but there's no name. Mr. Green Avatar. Who's go down, that? down, 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 right there. Can you guys help explain to me why they sent Kaiser down? Murphy isn't playing until Sunday, and right. Zaitsev will be somewhere else next year. It's, uh, Kaiser it's is more, more important, important to Rockford than Chicago. What right happens now. in Rockford from here on out is far more important than what happens in Chicago. Uh, the Ice Hogs are getting themselves primed for a nice playoff run. They want Wyatt Kaiser to be a part of it. Uh, that's what they said when, um, you know, they uh, – that's what they said when – When it became evident yeah. that Rockford was going to have a better season than Chicago. When they, when they sent him down, Richardson even said that. Like, hey, we want him to be down there playing big minutes. It's more important for him. It's more important as a whole. So, so that's why. Like, winning in Rockford and playing in the playoffs is more important than playing 16, 17 minutes in these last few games. Yeah. Uh, and Giggity says I left off Reichel from that list uh, of young players who we didn't. Cry. We haven't really questioned his effort. No, much I think this it's year. more we've, of like his. We've questioned his his, his willingness to yeah. go well, to the tough areas, yeah. or or uh, you know. How is this person uh, nameless? I don't know. Well, 
We're not hey, answering any more of your questions. Do you confused. have a name? You could be one of our fake bot guys from the other show. There you go. Um, so, yeah, no, we haven't really been able to question Reich, Reichel's effort. I just think it was too much, too quick this year for him. Uh, and, you know, it, it got in his head. Yeah, I think the, the season he was having, having it not go his way right away, um, probably started to weigh on him. And then that just got worse and worse as right. the season went on. Yep. All right, we got to take our first still, break of the show. You still don't have a name, it's, Dan. It's, from it's Dan from Milwaukee. Yeah. Hi, Dan. I, I'm, all right. He's, pr- he's probably got he's one, one of, of your those. people. <laughs> well, I got one of those new YouTube accounts with their new uh, format that doesn't need a name or something. Well, welcome in, Dan from Milwaukee. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate the, uh, the views and the questions. Are you Diarrhea Dan from earlier in the oh, season? Oh, man. Diarrhea Dan and the Poo Poo Gang. <laughs> that was last season. That was season. the Blackhawks tonight. <laughs> that was last season, and that was a one and done. They, they showed up, and <laughs> they played their one-hit wonder, and, uh, and then they never, never returned. Yeah, it's too bad. If we ever did a best of show, that was gonna I would have put that clip in there. It's pretty good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're in the break zone, and when you're in the break zone, you know what you uh, what you can do. You can put down. Stuff. You can you can break down your uh, wallet and put mm. some money on sporting events, uh, and you can do that with Circa Sportsbook. The best place uh, to wager on sports is with Circa Sportsbook because of their tight money line splits and their low hold models. Circa will strive to keep games at a minus 110 split, for example. Uh, on their sports menu, unlike other sports books, which may have a minus 115 or minus 120 split on those same games. Circa Sports keeps as little money as possible on large market bets, especially compared to those other books. And what makes Circa great is that they do not limit players based on their winnings. Every player has the same limits, unlike other books who limit those who are winning. And Circa encourages other bettors to download and explore all of the other betting apps and compare the lines and see that you are always getting the best with Circa Sportsbook. Uh, the best, another great thing about them is their customer service. They have real people behind yep. the Circa Sports brand who resolve issues in a timely fashion, unlike other books who use chatbots. Chatbots like Dan from Milwaukee. Oh. <laughs> Uh, all aspects of the app no, no, are being run <laughs> by the same team. Nice. We love you, Dan. Uh, that runs the main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. So download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasports.com slash Illinois dash app. Sign up today. Be on the lookout for more Circa events. And if someone you know or you yourself may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537. Or text GAMB, G-A-M-B, to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. Yeah, Dan, we were just kidding. We love you. We know you're not a bot. And uh, you know what else we love? Delicious pizza. Tavern-style pizza Mm -hmm. from our friends at Salerno's on Tap, located Mm -hmm. at 1201 West Grand in Chicago's West Town. Get yourself some tavern style pizza and some ice cold beers. They had us stocked up mm-hmm. for our WrestleMania watch along. It was oh, awesome. Man. We were all beyond full and beyond happy that night. Whether you're headed to the Hawks game, you want to watch it live on their big screen TVs, or if you're watching from home, Salernos has you covered. Go to SalernosPizza.com or call 312 666 3444. Mention CHGO and get half off your pizza. Head to SalernosPizza.com or call 312-666-3444 for more info. The length of uh, Gunther's uh, intercontinental title run that ended. Oh, I didn't know. What? (laughs) His title run. It ended with 666 days. That's sad. Poor guy. We were all there for it. We were. It was fun. It's good, that was a it's fun good that Sami Zayn's family didn't watch him be murdered in the ring. We all expected that to happen. Yeah, that was my <laughs> first instinct was, oh, God, no. <laughs> I have a Mick Foley PTSD yes. from, uh, from that whole thing. Uh, I'm, we're looking at uh, not a lot of uh, – I think the only reporter in St. Louis it's is Ben, ben Pope yeah, or Ben so. Pope. Um, so there's not a ton of post-game stuff coming in. But, again, <laughs> kind of like what Jason Dickens had to say, okay. what is there to say? What is that on the screen? Um – that's hey, weird. It's oh, it's an Rose. ad. Yeah. You know, um, you can't have more than three tweets. In I was like, what is ad? that? <laughs> I don't know. Here's an interesting tweet from uh, Jeremy Rutherford, who covers the Blues. 
Uh, now that Rob Thomas uh, scored tonight. Smooth. Uh, the Blues have five players with over twi- with at least 25 goals this year. Damn. That'll, and get, yet, that'll get it done. No, apparently not, because they're not going not. to the playoffs. Yeah, it doesn't seem <laughs> like it's because none of them playoffs. hit 30. So. <laughs> Kairou has 29, Bushnevitz and Neighbors 27, Saad 26 goals from Brandon, Brendan Saad, quietly having another He's really still, good year. He's uh, still kicking. And Thomas with 25, and yet no playoffs. Five guys with 25. Eh. Pretty good, yeah. That's that's That'll, a start. I mean, they're not officially eliminated. If they were in the East, they'd be in the playoffs. Vegas is losing. True, they're getting molly uh, So so much for that. Uh, the math we did before the, the watch. Along. The um, that was well. That was uh, that was done four minutes into the game. So much for Connor McDavid <laughs> uh, not being at a hundred percent going to affect the Oilers because yeah, they they they're beating that ass right now. Perfect. Five to one in the second period. Is that third period? So this went, wouldn't so it be crazy if Vegas didn't make the playoffs. It's kind of, uh, it's. They're kind of getting. It would be crazy. I would love it. I hope. Yeah. Not. And you know what would mean? That would mean that the Blackhawks beat them on home ice the last game of the year to prevent that from happening. That would have to happen. Yeah. Likely. Yeah. It would have. Yeah. Because they, the, they can't win another game if the Blues. Yeah. Because the Blues were, what, five points back? I'd rather they make it than the Blues. So. Yeah. I'd they're now three points behind Vegas. With three games looking to, to play. stay that. They have three games left. And. The Vegas has four games left. So Vegas literally oh, yeah. can't get another point. Yeah, you can't drop points. Because so. the best that St. Louis can do is 93 point, or 95 points. Right? Three games left? Yes. Three games left, they have 89. They have 89, 95 yeah, points. Yeah, 95 is 95. the best. So and Vegas is at, what, 93 points? They're at 92. 92. Yeah, so you, you can't be dropping points. So Right. Vegas will... Uh, L.A. and Vegas, the last two games of the year, oh, wow. those could be very... Me- the, the Hawks can uh, screw some somebody up. Well, they, they had want. a chance to screw the Blues tonight and sure didn't. Well, they sure did the not. Pooch, all right. Yeah, if you're, if you're not going to beat the Blues, I don't know if you're going to beat Vegas. Now, if the if the Blues were in the uh, in the East, they'd be a, a wild card team. Probably clinched by now. <laughs> mm, that's true. Yeah, because the East... Second wild card is what eighty four points. Eighty five. Eighty five. Caps by beating the Red Wings last night. Good for them. They're doing the wave in Edmonton right now. They're doing the wave in the Oilers game. I would like to see Troy a Jack Murray's Eichel goal. Mad. No reason. You like to see a what goal? A Jack Eichel goal. Like, oh, okay. I wonder why. Mm, yes. Can't imagine what why you possibly <laughs> want to see that. Why would you want that? Uh, Just I don't for know. grins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's, let's, yeah. Uh, why don't we daydream about next year a little bit more? Because sure, what else we got to do? There's nothing more to talk about this year, and I liked what we did during the watch along. Just kind of. Do we want to finish our segments from this game and then move on? We got some more votes rolling, right? No, it's over. Is it over? It was over a long time ago. We need to know. Well, We've seen is, enough. Are the graphics ready? Is the question, I guess. Steve Kornacki's call it. Oh, uh, let me see. Are the graphics ready? Do, 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 got do, Ninety-four do. votes. If you don't know, I don't know who does. Two percent of that. <laughs> it's over. Uh, it's over. It's a lot I'm of just votes. Trying to think yeah. I have one. I think we can call. I think I do. Do I not? Do I not? We can just do them. On yeah. There. I mean, I don't. I don't have a picture of, of our guy. That's fine. All right. So, Whatever. who's the winner of four star? Put the in the leprechaun from uh, Notre Dame. Yeah, that's Whoa. not gonna work. <laughs> don't worry, it's not an actual screen. <laughs> that's a lot going on right there. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh it's slag. It's Landon Slagger. All right. Hey, way to go. Hooray. Landon Slagger is eighty two percent. Oh damn. Eighty two percent. Let's just call it eighty four. Oh, it why went, not? It went down to eighty one right as I clicked end poll. Oh, oh so. no. That's all right. He's hey, still that's won. All right. He's, that's over. He's still he's going eighty one percent of the ninety four votes, and he's getting the Maverick Bork scoreboard. Uh, treatment. We have no picture <laughs> or name or number. For that. I thought I had number a picture. Number eighty-four. But I, I, don't, I don't know where it went. Number eighty-four in your program. Number if, one in, you know, in our poll. Tonight. Goodness sakes, they didn't have a good picture of him. Of course. Yeah, that's I mean, what happens. Why, why would they? Yeah, uh, he's I very won. Photogenic. How do they not have? Yeah, really. Uh, I won. Who's your hawk? It's over there. Oh, are we doing? Oh, you actually oh, you won, won by uh, fourth lines, right? Or yeah, blue, yeah lines. blue lines. Yes. No, no, it's all right. Leave it. Uh, Connor Bedard had the less shitty blue line of our three guys. Our three were actually right in a row. Yes. It was Bedard, Reichel, the bottom. and Jones. <laughs> yeah, in the bottom all half. All minus. There you go. Top uh, top blue line today was Lance Sleggert. So it's fitting that he was our fourth star winner. Domer. There you go. And uh, are we ready to go to Connor's corner? Man, this is you guys are killing me here. We want to uh, move on from this game. We want to yeah, we we're gonna go to Connor's game corner. As as Let's go to Connor's frickin' corner. 
I gotta look for new stuff on the. Oh, I see the iPad is shorted out. Yeah. <laughs> he threw it. Luke yeah. Richardson chucked it across the room. And no, no, uh, uh, no oh, Dino Nuggies for he him. Finished after his that nuggies. Game. No, he took them away. Not with a minus one, you don't get a Dino Nuggies. Yeah. New more laundry. He's got a nice new laundry basket though. Yeah. Connor Bedard minus one, two shots, four shot attempts, nineteen fifty two of ice time. Uh, forgettable game for him. Didn't have a lot of help. Uh, he was out there doing what he could do, but. You know, they're not all going to be great. So yeah, you look ridiculous. Tough. It's one of those. No kidding, I look ridiculous. <laughs> Is that the games. point? <laughs> all right, well, we already went. Uh, can't wait till we have our big hat next year. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they're Me on too. that. Yeah. So there you go. All right, can we scrap this game? Yep. Are we washing our hands oh, of it? Oh, Let's sh- never speak oh, of it again. It up. Toss it in the basket. Gone. Yeah, that was that was crap. That there was you know, absolute one of those, one of those cloggers. I, that just it's just you know maybe a part of it was the fact that we were doing a watch along that was so infuriating. Like, all right, this will be fun. We'll have a whole game to talk yeah. about, and before we could fill our beers, it was over. Yeah, it was just like, really, mm-hmm. what are we doing here? That absolutely sucked. That was that was as bad of a game as they've had all year, and boy, there have been a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's provides an opportunity to. Uh, not have to live in the moment and look look to next year we talked about who's coming back free agent uh ufas and rfas we talked about draft stuff like it was it was good let's talk about more of it yeah let's do more of that and we, I, where do we want to start we want to start with the free agents we didn't get through all of them did we depending yeah we yeah. did did we pretty much okay well the ones that we can, well, we got a lot of people who are listening on the podcast that weren't here for the yeah. watch along. So I think we, we should. It. Well, shame on them. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's talk Damn, about some of these guys that are out of contract after this season. Uh, let's start with Tyler Johnson. Uh, he's got this year, is it? And he's an unrestricted free agent. I can't imagine a scenario where Tyler Johnson. Yeah, is back. I think he's. I think he's probably looking for uh, a better opportunity. Right. I. Don't think he's coming back. Uh, and I'm sure that I'm sure the season that he has had sets him up to be like he could go to a team that has higher aspirations than the Blackhawks, play in a, a more regular, lower role like bottom six role, and be completely fine. Because he was because he was playing probably above what he needed to to be here, yeah. and he still put up what thirty points this year. 30 some points. Yeah, and I mean that could be an, a, a nice addition for a contender looking to solidify things for cheap. Yeah. You know, and bring in a little bit of leadership, a, a guy, somebody with a lot of playoff experience, two Stanley Cups. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, but he's also one of those guys this year where you're like, "Oh yeah, he's still here." I honestly seriously just checked the box score to see if he played tonight. Yeah. There's yeah, been he, a lot of games this year where when you talk about slow starts and passengers you can put him in that group. Yeah. I mean, and I like I like when, Tyler Johnson a lot. He's got all that veteran stuff we just talked about. Great guy in the room, always willing to talk to us, but but a lot of games where you're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot Tyler Johnson's here." Yeah. Yeah, too many of those. Uh next on the list, unrestricted free agent Callum Blackwell. He I made 1.2 million this year. I think he's back. I would be fine if he's back and I wouldn't be brokenhearted if he's gone. Like I like him a lot, but I'm at the point where it's like, can we raise the bar? Yeah. I kind of agree with if that. There's but an, I if mean, there's if, an upgrade available, yeah. go for the upgrade. But I think also you could make the argument that you could put him in a lesser role than he was in this year and put him on the fourth line. But again, like, when is it time to give Ryder Ralston a look? When is it time to – we already talked about Landon Slager. Like, even Mackenzie Entwistle – Probably got more upside than Blackwell. Like Blackwell is at this point well, what Blackwell he is. Blackwell is also what thirty. He's 31. 31. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. if you're trying to say we're investing in guys that are having a opportunity to be here a little bit more long term, sure. Um, I just don't think we're. I don't just don't think the organization is in a spot where they are saying, okay, we can only pick one of these four guys. Like, I, I, I think they're they're they still have some leeway in the rebuilding process to say we're going to keep this guy around an extra year because he's done everything we've asked of him. He's the right kind of guy we want in the locker room. And I think Blackwell is that kind of guy. I think he gets a one year deal and then we'll see from there. And I don't think that, I don't think that hurts the team. I don't think you're in a spot where 
you have to look at every free agent and say, we have to upgrade, we have to upgrade, we have to upgrade because that's going to cost you money. That's going to cost you because guys who upgrade from those players are going to want more money. They're going to want longer term. And I don't know how much of that Kyle Davidson is willing to give up just yet. Sure. So I think a guy like Blackwell, uh, one year, two million, you know, th- you went through a lot. We we were here for you for a lot of it. You came back. He's the he's the team's uh, uh, Masterton uh, Trophy nominee. nominee award. I don't know. I don't know how they phrase it, but like he's and, and he's a good guy in the locker room. He's a good guy with the team. Like I think he's somebody the organization likes. So I I would be surprised if he's not around. And I don't think it's for the fact that like they want to upgrade. I think it's that. They they want to have guys like him in the locker room still. Yeah, I, I'm good either way. I'm good either way. And I think, you know, like we said too during the watch along, like I think the draft lottery is going to dictate a lot of that. I think there's, it could be a guy who tests for agency, and sees you know maybe Kyle Davidson says, why don't you go see what's out there for you? Yeah, let's see what happens on our end, and let's touch base before you sign anywhere, and see what we can get done. We're going to continue with the free agents here in a second. But we are once again in the break zone, so Greg is going to tell you about delicious, salty, sweet bacon. You good? Oh, nope. You need a cigarette? Yes. All right. You need bacon. Or some, ex- I, or some nicotine. See, Charlie is the, Charlie is the bacon guy. That's who we're talking about. Based out of Woodridge, Illinois. He makes craft bacon and bacon jams in over 35 flavors. They're naturally occurred, preservative-free products. There aren't any ingredients that Charlie can't pronounce himself involved in the process, unlike most store-bought bacon. If it was ingredients that I can't pronounce, it'd be an empty package. Uh, (laughs) Vacuum-sealed and freezes perfectly. Bacon lasts in the package. It says ranch, (laughs) Greg. Up 60 days in the fridge. That's why I became a writer. I can't pronounce crap. Then this came out. One week after the steel is broken and nine months in the freezer, bacon jam lasts up to 90 days in the fridge and up to one year in the freezer. But if you're keeping bacon in the freezer that long, you need therapy. The bacon jam goes perfectly on anything. You can put it on scrambled eggs, toast, crackers, burgers, grilled cheese. It's spreadable bacon. Put it on anything you want. We won't judge. Uh, Go to charliethebaconguy.com. You can check out the bacon vault where it's got all the flavors he's made in the past. If it's not currently available, give Charlie about two weeks and he'll make it for you. You can buy awesome merch, beanies, hat, t-shirts, stickers, and coffee mugs. I've got new stickers I need to put on my uh, laptop. Uh, Some of my favorite flavors include the ranch, the rosemary bacon. There's a new vanilla bourbon, a maple espresso, Cajun, lots of good stuff. Mm. And there's now Canadian bacon. Oh, Oh, yeah. eh? Or as they call that in Canada, bacon, back bacon. (laughs) Ham. Uh, original bourbon cherry jalapeno are what is in stock and the bacon jams. And starting now, you can save 10% on your order at charliethebacon.com when you use the promo code, listen up, C-H-G-O Hawks. We need to C-H-G-O win this contest. Hawks. Let's go, Hawks. Because There's... we're having a, Charlie is having Let's a go. competition. The show that sells the most bacon via this code gets free bacon. If we don't so win don't, this, yes. oh, my God. I mean, ball. Jay is the reason Charlie is even involved in CHGO, mm-hmm. so we need to win this. So CHGO Hawks, Ha-ha. save 10% and help us get free bacon. You could pick it up. Hawks. Charlie would meet you halfway, yep. ship it to you. Charlie drove all the way from Woodridge yesterday, dropped off like nine pounds of bacon at my house in Wilmette, and then drove all the way to Elgin to drop off a bacon charcuterie board for friends of ours. <laughs> Uh, who just went through uh, a major operation. So we uh, sent them a whole bunch of bacon because what helps you forget about your surgery than bacon? Bacon. Depending on the surgery. Unless it was open heart surgery. Just, <laughs> depending <laughs> on the surgery, but usually bacon is good. It was a different part of the body. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, and it's been a couple weeks. He's fine. All right, great. So, yes. So, yes. Charlie is the man. He makes the bacon so you can bring it home. Mm-hmm. And when you're chomping on your bacon, Help it go down, lubricate the pipes with ice cold Coors Light. <laughs> oh, listen to that. Mm-hmm. The ASMR is just beautiful. It is the perfect beer to chill. And boy, after four goals in the first eight seconds of the game, <laughs> we all cracked open our own Coors Light yeah, and enjoyed yeah. 
the rest of the game. It made it a little bit easier. I wouldn't say we enjoyed it, but it made it a lot easier yeah. to watch. That's for damn sure. Uh, grab yourself some Coors Light. It is the perfect cold refreshment to chill you out, especially during a stressful game after a long day of work. And you know my favorite? We're getting to that time of year where you cut the lawn. Mm. You're a little bit hot, sweaty. Come in. Oh, that ice cold Coors Light goes down perfect. When the mountains turn blue, it is as cold as the Rockies. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish when it's time to cold. chill. Open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light's the beer we reach for. Get some delivered right to your door. Right meow by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO hockey. That's CoorsLight.com slash CHGO hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. I'm very excited about my first post grass cutting beer next week. Mm -hmm. I am I'm treating myself. I have ordered dog doo doo pickup because I don't want to do it myself. Oh, so I'm getting it done, do getting the service done, and then as soon as they leave, the lawnmower will be fired up and the Coors Light will be on so ice. You're saying you just haven't been in the backyard for six months or what? Uh, no, I've been back there. He uh, Bailey does a good job of going on the perimeter. I'm sure. Good. Um, but so, avoid the so, perimeter so he can play on the Blackhawks power play. Well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. He is the Lucas Reichel of go. dogs. There He's the go. Dylan Secura of dogs there when it comes is. to pooping. Yeah, yeah I, usually, so, uh, I usually just run over it. Yeah, it'll spread its own size. Oh, it's fertilizer. God. Oh, my God. No, no, fertilizer the for the worst. rest of the lawn. I can break a blade depending Wait, on how long it's been out. Are oh. you in a riding mower then? Huh? Are you in a riding mower? No. Ugh. What kind of money do you think I have? Well, I, I don't know. You're, you're, so you're walking through a bunch of poo. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Th they're my lawn cutting shoes. They've seen worse. You know, if you have a riding lawn mower, <laughs> you don't even have to wait till after uh, the lawn's done for a Coors Light. You just pop that right on the that lawn. That drunk mower. driving? I don't think so. I don't know how You're that not works. on a road. You're just in your yard. I mean, I don't know. I look forward to it. There's nothing better than looking over, looking out the back window at the fresh cut lawn. Like, yeah, mm. that's it. Now, do you do? I have a service. Do you do like? different directions each time do you try and make fun designs uh i have a very odd backyard where it has yeah, a sucks. fire still, pit in the middle still talking about grass right so it's like go yeah. <laughs> i go in a circle sometimes it goes oh, like, it's like very wavy i do the yeah. circle I have, I have a giant tree in my front yard i like yeah. to circle around that little that's fun but now i'm just avoiding poop i just do <laughs> chris random crisscross <laughs> till it's all in your bare feet till it's, poop. till it's all covered <laughs> um, remind <laughs> me not to go in your yard ever <laughs> But yeah, it was like, hey, what's the, what's the price for a one-time pickup? And they're like, this much. I'm like, oh, They're like, but we'll do eight weeks for a lesson. And I'm like, all right, eight weeks, eight weeks, ten bucks a week. It's cheaper so you, than so I pay my daughter let, to do it. You just let the poop pile up for no, a week. No, they do it every come, week for eight weeks. Right. So you just yeah. let it pile up for a week, and then they come and take it away. Yeah, you pick up when you cut the lawn. See, I, so since you're paying I'm for it, are you going to go out there and take a couple of crafts to see if they <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How good is your blade? <laughs> How, I mean, I you should take your problem. dog to the hospital. We found this pile back there. How often do oh, you pick it up? I have a fenced in backyard, so I don't need to pick it up every day. If I know we're going to have people back there, I pick it up. No, but we, we go outside in our backyard. We have a we have a porch. We don't stay okay, in well, I, I'm, I don't. I can't. We're not a yard. <laughs> they're not a yard family. I can't... Uh, <laughs> I can't get involved in this conversation because my dogs don't go outside to poop. They're still yeah, they're paper trained. You're lucky. That's and so uh, nice. I also For hire a small dog. That's I good. also hire. I have a landscaper. I don't do See. it. Ooh, fancy Greg with his landscaper. I enjoy cutting. <laughs> it's Twenty five bucks a week. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great deal. I mean, I don't want to do it. My daughter's like, I'll I'll pick up the poop every week for twenty bucks. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And this was our first house, so I don't even have a lawnmower. Yeah, and I'm not gonna buy one. I'd rather just pay someone to do it. Good they'll for you. Do, they'll do it better than I ever will. That's true. Yeah. Let the I enjoy professionals it, handle I enjoy it. I, I like the enjoyment, like you were saying, I like the enjoyment of cutting the grass, knowing that I did it and it looks good enough, and it's just like, ah, I did that. That's yeah. like one of those like homeowner, right. dad, like, man, mm, man It's also man an hour of no one talking to me. Yes. It Theoretically. Is, it is nice to throw on the headphones and just cut the grass yeah. for an hour. Nice. It's good stuff. And oh, Kevin in the chat says he can vouch. Two cold boys per mo on the riding mower hits just right. Oh, I bet. There you go. I bet. Man, I'm just dreaming about that. It's mm. it's right. it's almost here. Grass is getting long in my yard. Yeah. 
Well, I can tell you where he went because it's like long, short, long, short, long, short. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> so. My yard's like that, too, with my dog. It's just like, yep, yeah, that's where he went yep, all there winter. There it is. Should be easy for the guys to find. It. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> if you're still listening, you must Everyone's be mad. Dog. Phillip's like, what are you guys talking about right now? Let's you, talk about Should the we break down the, the, the four goals? They pretty much look like Jay's backyard. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> poop. Talk Just a bunch poop. of piles of Let's poop. Let's talk more about Jared Tenori and Nikita Zaitsev. There yeah. is some conversation in the chat going on about Kevin Korchinski, and I saw Perimeter uh, someone mentioned that perhaps he should have gone back to the Western Hockey League mm, this year instead. I, I don't understand the like what what how does it For benefit him? Games late on that conversation. Yeah. How does it benefit him to just like toy with dudes? That doesn't make you better. I. The only uh, reasoning that I, I feel like makes sense is give him another year of physical development before getting to the pre- professional level. Um, but for Korchinski, I feel like he he got to a point at the beginning of this year where, uh, you know, he, he's, he's not a small guy. He's, no. He's thin, slender, uh, you know, he'll have to fill out his frame a little bit more, um, and that'll just come with time. But skill-wise, how he reads the game, the pace of everything that's going to be coming at him as a defenseman, um, I would I would much rather of him, like he has this season, uh, gone through the NHL, uh, play at the NHL level, um, learn, some, learn some hard lessons, and be able to learn from them, go into next season with, you know, the ability to say, like, all right, I, I know what to expect as far as the pace of the game, the speed of the game. He has the ability to make those decisions quicker. I think we've seen that at times this season. Um, I think it's much better for his development moving forward to get those kinds of lessons than if he played in the WHL, was the, the number one defenseman, number one power play guy, yeah. um, you know, too too good to play in that league, put up you know 90 points as a defenseman or something like that's all well and good that makes you that makes you feel good dominating junior hockey um but i think at at this point and and look the blackhawks are are very in tune with their development uh system and and um i i think if they figured there's not much left for him to uh uh to learn then bring him up i so physical development i get that valid point but he's here working out with paul goodman all the time with an nhl training regimen and diet and dietitians and all that stuff so maybe that's a wash the other thing too is like i think in Connor bedard think of think back to like the first handful of games Connor bedard played where some of the bad habits he developed because he was so much better than everybody he played against in junior, he thought he was going to come to the NHL and split three defensemen and dangle through everybody. And he had to learn those hard lessons of, no, dude, like you're really, really good. You're going to be great. We all know you're going to be great, but you're not going to dangle through Colton Pareko or Victor Hedman or Mm -hmm. Roman Yossi or whoever it might be at that time. Those guys are going to shove you down to the ice and it's going to be going the other way. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, more time, like you said, top power play, 90 points, all that stuff is great. But it's some, I, I do feel like when you're that much better than the guys you're playing against, you you can get away with cheating a little bit. And you can get, get away with, eh, I'm so much better I can make up for the speed. Mm-hmm. I think learning lessons at the NHL level with very little expectation to win. And I think that's kind of what separates – Korchinski from Boquist and Yokoharu, who came up here on teams that were at least like pretending like they, they were had, supposed they to had win. Expectations. They had expectations yeah. of being at least competitive playoff teams. And he had none of that pressure this year. And those guys were at different times in their first or second seasons, put with Duncan Keith and said, be a top pair of defensemen. Right, right. Just right. go out and yeah. do it. And it was yeah. like, okay. Right. And it didn't work out. And uh, those guys also had to come up and play Jeremy Colleton's system of defense. Yeah. That's not helping any young defenseman. At least with Korchinski, he's here uh, with, you know, Luke Richardson and Kevin Dean, two guys who played a lot of NHL games at the position, 
they're not giving him too much. I don't think. I don't think they've put him in spots that he can't. You know, when I think they've done a good job of when he's gotten overwhelmed at certain spots, they've pulled back. They've rewarded when needed. You know, put him on the top power play every once in a while. I think they've done a, a, a pretty good job, and I mean. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been a great overall season for him, but I'm not exactly sure what kind of expectations you had for him. Right. As a 19-year-old kid, never played in the NHL, a little on, on the under... Like, yes, it wasn't the ideal situation for him. I don't think this was the perfect situation. Uh, you know, I don't... Th- but I don't think it's been a disaster by any means like i don't think they've hurt his development no, at he, all i don't he's think he's not what i thought he was going to be he's lived up to expectations because my expectations for him this season weren't that high would i like more points absolutely sure. everybody would would i would i like more shots on goal or more aggressiveness with the puck yeah but i think he's a kid that is so focused on not making defensive mistakes that he gives up his offensive Aggressiveness, and that's why he was drafted where he was drafted. Offense, yeah. He wasn't drafted seventh overall because he's going to shut you down. He was brought in because he's going to be a dynamic offensive defenseman, and we just haven't seen enough of that. But that's going to come. He's he's a young kid yeah. playing in the league for the first time, playing against grown men for the first time, playing right. eighty-two games for the first time. Like I don't think, I think he's made some strides in areas. He's got a lot to learn, but. Tell me one 19-year-old defenseman in any level right. that doesn't have more well, – right. that doesn't have holes in his game. Um, at the end of the season, at the end of it, hindsight, I think it was the right call. I thought it was the right call at the beginning of the year. I don't know if a season in Seattle really would have done a whole lot. Again, because now he's – now he knows heading into this offseason what he needs to do right. to get stronger. He's got a year's worth of tape. On this belt. level. Just not even – the 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 position itself just his body he knows what he like okay now that i've had a full year of of banging and and you know hitting with these guys and getting some uh you know finding out how i can use my leverage and positioning he now knows what he has to do to get stronger physically in those Mm -hmm. areas and a year playing against 17 18 year olds that he would where, where know. he has all the physical yeah. advantages. Right. Yeah. And and Sean, who is I think kind of heading the other side of this argument, mentions Brand Clark from the LA Kings. If the Hawks were in the LA Kings position, Kevin Korchinski would be in the Western Hockey League. Right. They wouldn't have him up here if the games matter, if they're fighting for a playoff spot and going for a potentially a right. Stanley Cup run, it would be different. But because this season was, hey, we're a lottery team, potential Worst, second worst, third worst team in the league. Let's bring him up there so he understands, hey, man, ex- mistakes are the expectation. Mm-hmm. When you screw up, to us as part of the learning experience, we're not going to bench you. He never got benched this year. Was he ever healthy scratched? Yeah, that one game. One game. Someone, someone brought that up. How he, that one game where he was, he was really bad, they, they sat him the next yeah, game. Okay, yeah, once. so one, one game. One yeah. game, yeah. And he, the other games he missed was because of the, the passing of his father, right. right? which also should not be overlooked as an impactful moment on his rookie season. Well, right, yeah. well, let's also think of what the biggest impact down the stretch to his season has been. Being paired with Jacob Megna has not done him any favors. No. No. So... If he could, you know, get through this season with, you know, ima- imagine him in two years, bigger, stronger, smarter. Right. And with a defensive partner that can cover his deficiencies in the defensive zone. Yeah. Because when you have a kid that's struggling in the, the defensive zone, and then you put him with a guy that has no clue what he's doing half the time. <laughs> It's a recipe for disaster, and all of a sudden the young kid looks worse than he actually is. Right. right. So yep. getting him with a real partner, <coughs> Chris Tanev, that'd be nice. That would look a lot better. It would. Yeah, and, and I saw someone else mention. I'm sorry, the chat's coming really fast. Like surviving versus developing, and that's why I wanted to make sure I went out of my way to specify the level of expectation. Right, Adam Boquist. 
said, like you said, go skate with Duncan Keith, and we're going to try to win again. We're going to be good. Go be a top pairing defenseman in a playoff run. In a, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's different from Korchinski. Mistakes aren't, they don't hurt you when the season is not, when there's, when the goal of the season far is to be bad. Far right? There's pressure. no pressure on him if he makes mistakes. Because, right. whereas with Boquist and Yokoharu, especially Yokoharu, that's the guy who, when I had that specific conversation with that scout, that's who we were talking about, where it was the calm on the surface going crazy under the surface like a duck's feet. Um, that team was trying to compete. They were trying to keep that window open, and they asked way too much of him as a rookie. And it was too much, and it overwhelmed him. And they ended up moving to Buffalo, and now he's kind of finally getting back to where he's that first-round level. He's also gotten to play with better Yeah, but it's just, yeah. a, it's just a yeah. different... It's a different situation. It is, because with Korchinski... Yeah, you have Duncan Keith breaking a stick over the board when you screw up. Right. <laughs> and when with Korchinski, if you make a mistake, you go right back out there. Mm. Because it does, in the in big picture, it doesn't matter if, you're, if, if you make a mistake that costs the Hawks a game. It, where if, if Boquist or Joki Hari and those teams make a mistake early, well, they might get sat. You know, they may get skipped a few times because they have to win that game. Yeah. Blackhawks didn't have to win any of these games this year. So right. that, that kind of helps. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too, like, wrapped up in it. I, I think it was, it was the best outcome of, not, of a less than ideal situation. And Windy City Hockey says Korchinski was paired with the worst options this year. Uh, Tenority or Magna is always a subject to failure. Hopefully next year the Hawks get him in a better pair this offseason. Then D. Paris says that's a bad development plan, Wendy, isn't it? But that that's injuries. And you're not going to take Kevin Korchinski, who's played 40, 50 NHL games, and say, well, your D partner's hurt, so we're sending you back to the Western yeah. Hockey League. Yeah, no. That You know what I mean? Like, Korchinski he, played his best hockey earlier in the year when he was with Connor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and look, if if he and was only healthy, of, scratched once this year, I mean, that, yeah, that, the, if we were to set an over under, they, they've said in the in the chat it wasn't a full game. He got benched. A period. Remember, he made, yeah, yeah, that's, he, that's yeah, he didn't even, he didn't miss yeah. a whole game. He got he missed like the entire third period. Sorry, no, it's all right. Yeah. I was reading it previous. It's all right. It's, no, been, it's been a to, long season. Yeah, where yeah I, I was trying to remember anything. too. I yeah, he was benched for a period, uh, but he played his best hockey of the season when he was with Connor Murphy. So he's with a better player, and it was also, you know, 30, 40 games into the season. Now he's at 65, 70 games, 70-plus. He's never played that much hockey before. He's got to be physically beaten up. uh, He's got to be mentally beaten up. And Bedard looks tired, too. Yeah. And it's understandable. And this is what you can expect for guys who've never done this before. Yeah. And Korchinski's part of that group that, that, with Bedard, is on the ice for an hour after practice, at some point, yes, we get it. You love hockey. Yeah. You want to get better. But at some point, you've got to preserve yourself a little bit because the NHL season is a grind. And what better way to learn that than in the NHL right. in a year where the results don't matter? And our, our friend Alan K made a good point about uh, Yoga Haru and Boquist. It's hard to tell if they even made a mistake since the system they were playing under Jeremy Cowan was so whack. That's a great that's, point. That's not that even That system that's, sucked. It's not even a joke. I mean, you had no You had idea. Duncan Keith look bad in that system. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was tough. When that, you now, City, yeah. that's a bad development plan. Yes. <laughs> Putting a young Jeremy Cowan. with Jeremy Cowan. Bad development who plan. Who now coaches in the AHL, which makes no sense. Uh, Windy City Hockey asked, does Nolan Allen get a shot in the NHL next year? That's going to be – I mean, that's the question is – I feel like if we had to handicap – Kaiser, Del Mastro, Allen is taking a defensive spot. I think that's probably my order of likelihood. Yeah. I think Kaiser gets first crack. I th- yeah, I think a lot of it is going to be determined in, in training camp. That's going to that's gonna be an, an actual battle is who's going to be that, like, four, five, six, seven defenseman, depending on what they do with the draft or free agency or anything like that. Um, but I think, I think Kaiser – where he's at in his development path is ahead of Del Mastro and Allen. Um, I think as far as ceilings go, I think Del Mastro might have the 
highest of the three, but I think I think Kaiser is further along in his development. So I would I would agree. I would have that order going into next year. Um, but I think I think it's going to get shuffled out in in training camp. Yeah, I, I don't. Allen's going to get a look to make this team. He's going to get a chance to make this team. Yeah, there was you got to remember last week or so at training camp last year we were starting to think does this is this kid going to make it? Yeah, because Luke Richardson was talking a lot about him, and he was playing. He, he had he was impressive in the preseason. So a year in Rockford, we'll see what he looks like. Uh, he's injured right now, but he'll be back for the playoffs. That's another reason why I'm so excited for the Rockford playoffs and, and covering as many of those games as possible. You know, getting to watch those guys play in those those, yeah. those moments. Guys that matter. And, and yeah, because, I mean, the last couple of years we've gone out for some of those playoff games. We went to watch Reichel. It was Lucas Reichel. Yeah. That was the only guy out there that <laughs> yeah. really yeah. we cared about. Now <laughs> it's Del Mastro. It's Kaiser. It's Allen when he comes back. It, it's Colton Dock. It's Ryder Rolston. Yeah. It's Drew Camezzo. It's, it's you know, there's guys that are... Rem pl- Rem- <laughs> Remington. Uh, it's guys that, that matter. Mm-hmm. And getting to see them in those pressure-filled situations is going to be huge. That's where the... the you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, these young kids can't lose every night you know bedard korchinski vlasic they can't lose every night well if you've got the guys come if all of a sudden the ice hogs become this ahl machine where every year they're they're playing in two or three playoff series yeah those guys get here as winners already playing significant games in february and march and april and beyond that rubs off on you, especially at a at an early point in your development. Yeah, you so can take that to the next level. That's where the culture starts. They want these guys when they're by the time they get here, they already have that. I know how to play winning hockey mentality yeah. from day yeah. one. Not learn it while they're here. Now, obviously, <coughs> to do my Kevin uh, Korchinski impression, uh, obviously, Korchinski and Bedard don't have that opportunity because they're NHL players right away. I mean, Korchinski got they, – they had plenty of winning in, in juniors and the world juniors, yeah. but as far as professionally, so um, – That season long. Yeah. Yeah. So these guys are going to come here next year with hopefully, you know, at least a playoff series win under their belt. I think this is a team that's built to at least got, go to a conference final. It's got some talent. They've got exactly what a Calder Cup playoff team needs you have – the talented young players, but you have those AHL veterans that know how to do it. Rem Pitlick has been amazing for the Ice yeah, Hawks yeah. since he's been down there. Fantastic. Zach Sanford's big. He's going to be really good in the playoffs. Guy like Brent Cini knows what to do. They got Luke Phillip back, who's been good. David oh. Gust. Yep. They've got that combination, and yep. they've got the goaltending. You got Philip Roos, too, defensively. Yeah. Like, who, I'm uh, sure, raise your hand if you forgot Philip Roos. Um, he has been. Perfect for them, because he I mean, he is that that level of player. Yeah, and and he's stabilizing defensively with all the young guys around him. Like, so that's that's a good mix there too on, on the back end. It's not just Phillips and and Crevier and Allen and Del Masho and Kaiser. It's not all these young inexperienced guys defensively, which can get you into trouble. Um, it's having a guy like Roos who's a little bit older, a little bit more experienced around the world um that's an important part too yeah they got a really good roster right now that they've got things going and and uh you know sean says mike hardman yeah mike hardman's had a career year down here yep he's been good uh doc and ralston you've got a great combination uh of guys uh they've got got a little bit of everything there get back you know so they'll they're gonna they're gonna be a tough team to play um you know the the Milwaukee Admirals kind of – they had a 19-game winning streak earlier in the season, which gave them the cushion. But uh, the Ice Hogs have beat them the last three times. The The Milwaukee Admirals, as good as they've been in that 19-game win streak, have only beaten the Rockford Ice Hogs once in regulation this year. Take that, Dan, from Milwaukee. Yeah, Dan. <laughs> uh, if so, that is your real name. So that's an impressive stat. So they're not intimidated by the, yeah. by the Admirals. They're going to play them three more times before the end of the season. So – 
Uh, it's it should be fun, and that's what I'm excited about. These last four games, the Blackhawks, meh. Like I'm excited to go this weekend because it's the last two times they're going to go. Yeah, and, uh, last two home games. And uh, I, you know, uh, the, the Carolina Hurricanes are my Eastern Conference team, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing them in person. But I just want that I, the Ice Hogs playoff run. I'm hoping is going to be long and fun. Yeah. Um, and this spring, we'll hopefully uh, a joke. <laughs> we'll hopefully be, uh, get involved with that as well. Maybe do some stuff out there in Rockford. Yeah. And I'm going to go to as many of those home games as I can. Yeah. Shout out to Mark Lamont in the chat who says, let Reichel become the Steve Maltese. Of oh, stop it. Songs. No. <laughs> We're giving up on Reichel already. No, I'm just, I just like the reference. I mean, Reichel, Reichel will likely be going to Rockford, too. So Yeah. No, that's, that's true. That's, just for that's the playoffs guy. is what I was the way I was taking. I, I hope, just like yeah. the Steve Maltese reference. I, I hope Steve. I hope Lucas Reichel does not play as many AHL games as Steve Maltese does. <laughs> Speaking of Steve Maltese, uh, saw him a couple years ago after uh, I think the last time they won the Wolves won the uh, Calder Cup was that twenty twenty two. Yes, uh, saw him post game, and he definitely took. The Keith Kachuk. <laughs> like, Did he eat Tony Amante? They they had to tell me like that was Steve. Oh, like boy. I had like, yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, I got a five dollar super he was chat. Some just like old off duty cop that was there working oh. security. <laughs> Could be Steve Melnate. <laughs> there you go. Uh, nice. Jeffrey Nine Style says my first ever donation to a podcast. Thank you for all the yeah. level headed analysis. Kept me off the cliff. He Thank actually you. had a good comment earlier. I wanted to get to. Uh, saying, bah, bah, bah. lots of good points in there. This, there it is. This off season is the first year we actually have to judge what Kyle Davidson, uh, and next season will be the first to also judge Luke Richardson. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. This will, this is the first non tear down off season. Like there's actually a semblance of building something now. I'm very interested in what he's going to say at the year end press conference about the summer ahead. Yeah. Because I still don't think they're going to make any, like, franchise-altering major free agent acquisitions. Major free agent. But it certainly sounds like they're going to try to add. Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see how – this is the one question about him is he's seemingly drafted well. He's been patient with the rebuild. Now it's time to convince some people to come play here. Can you do that? Yeah. And and if that is the route – uh, that Davidson goes in the offseason where they build a little bit and you look at this roster and you say it's better on paper than what we saw on paper going into last year where we all thought it was going to be better than it has been, injuries aside. Um, but if you go into next season with like, okay, we kind of had expectations of not sucking as much last year. This year, there's no way we should suck as much as we have the last two years. That's when you have the the expectations on on Richardson. And if it's a if it's not an injury riddled season and you have another year where it's just like, Oh, it looks like we're picking in the top five again. Then I think you open that door of like, okay, like Davidson's doing, doing something to help build rosters and build them better. Why are results not following? Hopefully yeah. we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's, we, I also, I need to remind myself of this often that this is also Luke Richardson's first coaching job. And he is still learning on the job. He's learning what works, what doesn't in terms of not just like strategy and things like that, but how to manage a roster, how to manage personalities, how, how to do those things. So yeah. everyone is learning as they go here. Um, but, you know, aside from that little bit of a, like, oh, this team is not ready to go somewhat too often. I've been very pleased with everything else Richardson's had to do. So we'll see. Yeah, Can't Great. wait. The season's not over. Can't wait till next season. All right, we're going to wrap things up. We're back tomorrow at 2.30 with stuff and also things. Mm -hmm. It should be a lot Mm -hmm. of fun. We'll talk to you then. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate you. We love you. email? Not yet. Not Not yet. I've been looking for it. All right. Yep. We'll talk to you. I'd kind of be surprised if they practice. I don't know. Tomorrow at 2.30 on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. (laughs) We all silly like the mayor. 